Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, OTA number five today. We're excited about the progress. I think the, the big thing that we're accomplishing in the OTAs is we're learning how to practice. We're learning how to get from drill to drill, offensively, defensively, special teams wise. And I know uh, Freddie's been talking about that a lot this spring and understanding how to practice and how to practice effectively and well and, and doing the little things better. And uh, it's kind of setting the tone for getting us prepared for uh, training camp here coming up in July. Coach, we haven't talked to you since. I know I've missed you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, from your perspective, what it, what went into selecting Austin Cyber? Well, Austin was the the best kicker we felt coming out this year. Um, he was the most experienced. He had we felt like the best leg. He had a great combine. He had a great pro day. Uh, I spent a lot of time with him in Indianapolis and separately. He had a couple different interviews with him and and really felt good about him and, and his uh, his mental approach to the game, understanding how his craft, how he works, you know, how his body works and how he kicks the ball. And um, you know, it felt like he was the uh, best option for us at the time. And you know, obviously, I'm not in charge of the draft, but you know, uh, uh, John and the personnel guys knew how we felt about him on special teams and how he could help us uh, compete and, and for uh, for that job. And uh, you know, John did a great job and selected him, and, and here we go. It's going to be great competition between he and Greg. How, how's it gone so far for him? The only day we were out here, inconsistent for both those guys. But yeah, I think well, because I was actually trying to where you guys were standing, I was trying to tell him to hit you guys with the ball <laughs> as many times, so just to make sure you guys were paying attention. Um, no, both those guys, I think right now are right about nine for ten in team. We're doing another team session today. Um, you guys probably saw him on the on the side and. And to be honest with you, we're working Jamie in there as a holder, and he's got no experience because Jamie did all the kicking at Pine Bluff. I mean, he kicked off, he punted, and he kicked field goals. So he's never been a holder. So uh, we had him working in, in those situations and those in those reps, and we missed a couple because the holds weren't great, but they're getting better as well. So it's a work in progress, but they're both very strong, very talented, and I'm excited where they're at. How hard is that for him to learn how to hold? Yeah, it's. Uh, I've been there before with punters. I mean, in the NFL, punters need to hold, as you guys know, because we don't get a lot of time with the backup quarterbacks and or backup receivers, whoever else can hold. Um, but at the end of the day, he's a very good athlete. He's worked very hard at it, and he's made a, amazing progress. What's the biggest difference in the kicking styles? Um, I think they're both very similar. I think. Uh, you know, it's basically maybe how they uh, follow through or, you know, how they strike the ball. I think there are slight differences, but they're both strong-legged, right-footed uh, kickers. What I talk about a lot, you guys are hearing me say this all year long, is for a place kicker to be effective, he's got to have great timing so he doesn't get it blocked off the edge. He's got to have great elevation so he doesn't get blocked up the middle. And obviously accuracy. All three of those things play into it. And all three... Uh, both those guys do all three things very, very well. So we just got to continue. Right now, Austin doesn't have the timing down because the other three guys have worked together with Greg, Charlie, and Britton uh, in terms of the timing of the, you know, we want to maybe be around 1-3, 1 3 one, three, zero, one two, seven, one, three, two is our parameters. And Austin's a little bit slower than that right now. But as he continues to work with those guys, he'll speed it up a little bit. Mike, the last time we met, uh, talked with you, you mentioned something about uh, Greg Joseph from Kansas. Mm -hmm. Right. He's worked hard on that, and that was basically the beginning of his approach. He is really inconsistent how he that first jab step, and that's what I noticed off game tape last year, um, and I noticed a little bit when he was coming out of college a year ago. Uh, he's corrected that, and he's and he's much more uh, consistent, much more effective now. When you uh, select your guys who are going to be on uh, kick return and punt return, mm -hmm. what, what goes into picking the best guys who are not going to get senseless holding penalties. Right. How difficult Well, what we're doing right now is all technique work. And what I've told these guys is, is don't give the official excuse to throw a flag. Don't be that guy that's going to, you know, the official, he doesn't want to throw the flag, but if, if it's there, he's getting graded on every rep as well. So I like explain that to our guys that he doesn't want to throw the penalty, but he will if it is a penalty. So we worked really hard on uh, technique. We worked on it in phase two and we we're just doing the jog through stuff against coaches. You know, we couldn't even do it against our players. Uh, we've talked about it in meetings. We showed a lot of tape and now we've been doing in the phase three, the OTA stuff is all techniques, all fundamentals. We constantly go over footwork. We constantly go over hand placements. We constantly go over uh, uh, how we finish blocks effectively. And basically through that process, we're going to find out who are the guys that are going to be able to do that at a high level. And they're not going to give up tackles and they're not going to get penalties. So it's, it, it comes in, you know, both those come into play, to be honest with you. With Jamie, did he come completely off the radar? I mean, he told us his story. It's an amazing story. Camp. Yeah. I mean, when yeah. did you first become aware of him? Well, I really, I saw him. Um, he was on our list. You know, our personal guys do a great job. Our scouts do a phenomenal job of identifying these guys. And I looked at him 
um, on his college tape. And he honestly, he was. They did a lot of different things with him with the rugby style and moving him around. And and he's very inconsistent. I knew he had a good leg, but there's a lot of good legs in college football. When he really became on our radar is he was at. Uh, we got some film of Zoner's kicking camp out in Arizona, and he had a phenomenal camp out there. I think he was the, the punter of the camp or whatever. And I saw that tape, and and I was talking with Elliot Wolf and John Dorsey one day, and they said, well, why don't you just go down there and work them out? And it was their idea. And I said, okay. Went down. I've never been to Arkansas before. I've been all over the world, but I've never been to Arkansas before. And I uh, went down to Pine Bluff, and he had a really good workout for us. And he brought him in our top 30 visit, gave him a physical, and he's healthy. And, and um, you know, the sky's the limit. He's got a big-time leg. I mean, Britain's obviously been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a little it seems out of nowhere. Does he have a real chance to win this job? This we wouldn't have brought him in. Yeah, it's going to be a competition for the punting, uh, for holding for those guys and for both kickers. So I'm not really into camp legs. I, you know, I know Britton's an older punter, but, you know, Britton was pushed last year and he, he uh, you know, he was up for the challenge and I'm sure he'll be up for it again this year. On your coverage units, obviously if these guys weren't great football players and great athletes, they wouldn't be in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But can you expect to have 11 great special teams players on every on those units or sometimes do you think you know in terms of technique and want to and all those things or do you really maybe have a handful of great special teams players and then you're trying to fill in with guys who are good athletes and can do other things how, how do you find those guys who are great at it yeah you you said it you said want to and that's what it comes down to they got to want it here uh, they got to be smart enough to not get penalized they have to obviously have the athleticism necessary to be great on kickoff coverage punt coverage whatever the core phase that he's on um, you know I think we've got some really good players here and, and we start to identify who those players are through the rookies through the veterans and and I you know I didn't know this team and, and now I'm getting to know these guys and I understand who wants it and who doesn't and the ones who want it if they don't start an offense or defense they're going to help us out. The ones that don't want it and they don't start an offensive defense, they're going to they're going to be somewhere else or not. They're going to be on the street. And I think guys understand that. Um, I, this team has really bought into what we're what we're all about, and it starts with our head coach and on down through the coaching, uh, the rest of the coaches, assistant coaches, coordinators, everybody. Uh, the type of player that we want, the type of players that uh, help us win football games, and that's what we're trying to identify as well. As far as the return game, you know, it was the last game of the year where Calvary had the longest yeah. kickoff and the yeah. longest punt of the year. Mm -hmm. Weren't here to ask what took us so long, but uh, does he enter this offseason as the lead return? I think Antonio is part of the conversation, absolutely. Uh, Dontrell Hilliard's part of the conversation. Uh, that Damon Sheehy, the young man that we brought in here that's a speecher, he's entered the competition. We brought in Dearness Johnson, the college free agent. Uh, running back, um, you know, he's entered the conversation. So we really haven't identified the number one guy yet. I think that's going to be a process. And, and really, when we have, when we're allowed to practice more often and, and do more returns and, and and that type of thing, and, and stay with them after practice a little bit longer, and work with the jugs and work with the punters and kickers, um, we're going to identify who that guy's going to be. And that's more of a training camp type issue. But we're starting to get uh, to get an idea who those guys are. And I noticed she said, you know, you're teaching them also how to be a receiver for the first time. Right, right. I mean, it's a long shot to make a team sure. only as a return specialist. Well, I think if, if uh, you know, I've had only return specialists before. Like in Minnesota, we had Marcus Sherrill, who did a great job for us for eight years. But Marcus was also our best gunner. He was also on the kickoff team. And if Damon's going to be a guy, then he's got to play on more than just return phases. He's got to be a guy that's going to help us in the coverage phases as well. Any the, of the uh, members of the rookie class standing out here early, usually the rookies and uh, mm -hmm. undrafted free agents, they're the ones that... Gonna yeah. make a difference. They're going to have to do it on your unit. Absolutely. Um, I think Shelter Gredwine's done a nice job. Mac Wilson's done a nice job. Uh, uh, Taka, Taki Taki, he's done a nice job. I like saying that name. Um, you know, some of these college free agent guys have done a nice job. Willie Harvey's done a nice job, was one of our linebackers. And, you know, I don't like to really go in because I'm going to miss some players and they're probably going to be mad at me, but that's okay. They'll get over it. They're rookies. But at the end of the day, um, I think we are a really good class. We've got a good group. Um, our, our personnel people and coaches identified some really good football players, and I'm excited about our, our where we're at right now, and I'm excited about our progress. Yeah, I don't know if there's a, um, a exact number per se, but we always talk about complementary football. 
It's offense helping defense, defense helping offense, special teams helping both, both offense, defense helping special teams. It's all about field position. It's all about opportunity. It's all about helping our football team be in the best position possible to to help us win games. So, you know, is there a bad? Is there a number of great special teams, bad special teams, you know, mediocre special teams? I'm not sure what that number is. I'm sure that's out there. You have to ask our analytical, analytical people. They're smarter than I am. Um, but you know, we hope to be. Uh, uh, units are all six phases, including field goal and field goal block, that you know that help our team win a lot of games here, and, and that's the goal. You know, I don't like to criticize what they did in the past. I know that the they weren't allowed to use the some of the personnel that was necessary, and, and I think that that comes starts with the head coach. And I know Freddie's done a great job of saying, hey. Brief, whatever you need, and it's going to help you win. If you need starters on offense, starters on defense to help you on some of the phases, then use them. Um, you know, use the backups where obviously backups are going to be on everything. But to be honest with you, it starts with the head coach. If you and, and he's and Freddie's done a great job giving us the time in all three phases uh, to be. We're a lot further ahead than I've ever been at some of the places I've been because of the time that the head coach has given us on special teams, and that's huge. He said that at his very first press conference that he was. He was going to do that because we have seen him in the past where it's okay. You guys have five. Minutes. Yeah, you can't. It can't be lip service. And I know when I read that quote, I started sweating. So now the pressure's on. So if he's going to give me the time, now we got to execute. So, uh, but that's fun. That's a great challenge. That's what I love about my job and get to work with the whole team and, and we get to, to benefit our football team and help our football team win a lot of games if we play well. And that's the goal. So your experience said that um, they weren't allowed to use some guys. I, I don't know if that's it, – it looked like some of the better players on special teams uh, were just on the sideline in some of these plays, which I don't understand. I think at the end of the day, you have to put your best players out there, and sometimes your best players are starters on offense or defense. You might have to use a Christian Kirksey. You might have to use a uh, Joe Sherbert. You might have to use uh, Demarius Randall on, on some of the core special teams to help us win, and, and those guys have bought in, and they're going to be there if we need them to. I wouldn't use them a lot. That would be dumb on my part, but, you know, because I want to win. It's not all about just special teams. It's about all offense, defense, and special team so if we can use some starters on some of these phases great and if we don't need them and we got good backups and we won't need them when you talk about like, four special teamers mm -hmm. how, how many players make up your four I think your your backup safety is the third and fourth sometimes fifth safety your your third fourth fifth wide receiver your fourth fifth sixth linebackers um, your your third fourth fifth corner uh, the, the third second and third tight end second third running back all those guys your fullback uh, those guys are your, make up your core special teams players. So those are the guys of the group of people on game days. You guys know we only dress 46 players, so we're going to have to make sure all our players come from that group. In your experiences, what are those conversations like with the head coach when you're trying to figure out, hey, can I use some of these guys mm -hmm. for some snaps here on special teams? Are, are those difficult conversations? How do you make your case sometimes if there are a couple starters you want to use at times? What does that like? Um, well, the great thing is, is that you know our head coach doesn't. It's not just lip service. He's actually, and he's already shown it in this early stages of us being together, that he wants to do well on special teams. And he's. I mean, we've had Nick Chubb on every drill. I mean, we don't put him out on the punt team, but in in the first couple phases, he's, he's been every meeting, even now. Uh, he's done all the drill work. Kareem Hunt's doing all the drill work. David Njoku's doing the drill work. I mean, these guys who are going to play a lot of offensive snaps for us. Denzel Ward's in every meeting on punt, punt return. He's always ready for us if we need him to because. If I'm going to ask those guys to perform for us, I have to prepare them. That's That would not be fair to them if I didn't do that. So when the head coach says get them ready, I'm going to get them ready. And then if we need them, we need them. If not, then you know we'll get those backups ready to go. Have you had times in your career where you know, maybe you're looking at the sidelines like, man, if I could put two or three of those guys on this team, we'd be that much better. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be frustrating, but I don't let it frustrate anymore. I guess when I was younger and was a little bit more of a hothead, uh, my daughter's over here, she can attest to that, that I'm a little bit of a hothead. But um, at the end of the day, it's, it's, uh, I'm given, it's like when I was in the Navy, you're given resources, you're given a job to do. Take those resources, get the job done. Same thing in coaching football. The resources are the players and the time that you have. Okay, and It's my job to get those players ready. And if I can't use some guys, I can't use them. I've got to move on. And I've got to understand the big picture. And usually, I think I do, that if a guy's banged up and we need him just on defense, well, he's only going to play defense. If a guy's banged up, we can only use him on offense. Same thing. So at the end of the day, I'm going to use the guys that are available. That the, you know, When Freddie says, these guys are available, use these guys, i got to get the job done. That's my job to do that. And that's why this time of year is so important. We're preparing so many players. All right, that could or could not play on game day. So we got to prepare them to, to be there when they need us, when besides, we need them. Besides 
besides personnel, were there is there going to be dramatic changes in technique and scheme? I think technique, absolutely. I think scheme. I'm not out here. I'm not going to out coach another coach on scheme. I think there's a lot of great special teams coordinators in our league. There are in our division. Our division's got great coaches. And um, at the end of the day, I have to, it's my job to make sure that we have the best schemes possible to take away what our opponent does well or what, how we think we can attack them. But it all comes down to technique. It all comes down to want to. It all comes down to the players. When you saw video of she and junior college, is that just sheer speed dominating? Uh, I think so, you know, and I just saw his workout, to be honest, when his workout here, I was down, I think, working out um, at Pine Bluff when he came in for the workout, so um, I just watched that workout, and, you know, he's he showed his speed and athleticism, and I, th I think that's what he ran, somewhere around there, yep. Just speaking about, again, sort of some of these four special teams guys, just for instance, a guy like Eric Murray, who has experience on special teams, has proven to do that, just, what does a guy like that do for a unit? you have a guy out there who's done it <coughs> absolutely that's he's a great he's a great one to bring up uh, because he was very good at Kansas City he was well trained they, they were very well coached at Kansas City uh, he's got want to he's got intelligence he's got athleticism um, he knows if he's not starting on defense he's playing on all four core phases and, and he's bought into that and I love having a guy like him around and we've had several guys like him uh, there's you know one of our linebackers here uh, Ray Ray Armstrong has done a phenomenal job he's had a great spring his he's bought into what we're what we're uh, teaching and talking about and you know guys like him that you know, they're going to be the leaders of our special teams unit. And it's like anything else, offense, defense, or special teams, you need leaders to be effective, and you need leaders to be good.